Hello, it's Mike Dempsey from Sutter Medical Center Respiratory Therapy. Today we're going to talk about inhaled nitric oxide. We're going to talk about what it is and basically how to set it up on all of our patient populations. Here at Sutter we use it on our neonates, our pediatrics, all of our adult patients. Um, it is used to for patients who have pulmonary hypertension. Uh, it's inhaled into the lungs. It helps dilate the smooth muscle in the capillary beds and improve oxygen exchange to the patient. All right, first things first, we're gonna talk about the components of the actual device we're gonna use. Um, we have the most important piece, which is our injector. This is where all the nitric is actually gonna be coming through to the patient. Uh, we also need to have a sample line which will be connected to the patient circuit, which is gonna give us all of our feedback here as far as how much INO we're delivering, what our NO2 level is, and what our FiO2 is. The other component of this setup is our blender system. So this is, allows us to deliver nitric oxide if you're having to bag the patient. The end of the O2 tubing would go here to your bag. You set your parts per million wherever you want here. Flow 8 to 12 liters per minute, depending on your patient population. Um, and bag away. Okay, we're going to go ahead and connect the regulator to the actual tank. So here is our INO tank here, ours is our gas. We have our locking mechanism here to make sure that this isn't accidentally left on, which would be very expensive. That just slips off like so. And then out comes that. Here is our regulator going on. You can see this tank is already kind of sensing that something's happening here. Now when I turn it on, you see the zeros? That the machine's telling, it's telling the machine that it's off. Right here is a sensor that actually communicates with the tank. So that'll tell the machine if it's on or off. So if you have something over it, it'll tell you that the tank is off even though it's on. So just be aware of that. <laughs> That's important to keep that clear. Um, the other piece is the injector line here. It goes into one of these two ports, doesn't matter which one, and it just slips in. Now when you're disconnecting this, it's a pull like so. To push forward and pull out. Let me do that one more time. Push forward and pull it out. Now when you're getting ready to set this up, you've got your tank, you've got your regulator on, it's plugged in. What you should probably do is just pressurize the tank, so turn it on and turn it off real quick. And now off. And now you see, okay, we have about roughly 1,800 in our tank, which is important. You wanna make sure that you know how much you have in there, how much you're using during your shift. Before we set it up on the patient, after we've done this, we're gonna purge it. And the way you do that is take this out, and there's a really small little piece here. You're just going to push that right in there. It's going to make a noise. So when you do that, you want to hold your breath because that's nitric coming out of there. Basically, that's going to purge all of the nitric that's been sitting in there. Um, so it's safer for when it goes on the patient, there's not NO2 buildup happening. So you want to do that right before you put it on. Um, the last thing before you're getting ready is your oxygen. This needs to go to 50 PSI, 100% setup. Unless you have a particular patient that they need specific SAT parameters, like a single ventricle heart pediatric patient or something like that, then you would have to set it to a blender. Um, so when you deliver the uh, like if you're going to use the bag, 
you'd have to deliver a specific FiO2. But generally speaking, 100% is where you want this to be. Another thing to consider and to make sure of, these lines are plugged in. This is actually connecting everything to your blender system in the front. So if you needed to bag the patient, this needs to be connected. And then this is actually the sensors that are connecting your tank regulator so it can read to see if there's actually how much you have going here. Okay, now we're gonna move into the part where we're assembling all of this stuff. How do we get the actual nitric to the patient? That's the important thing, right? So we will set our nitric at whatever parts per million that we want. Usually 20 parts per million is where they start, but you go by the physician's order wherever they want. We put the injector module in line, and then we need something to get it to the patient. Some kind of flow has to go through there, no matter what kind of modality you're on. If it's a nasal cannula, if it's a ventilator, if it's an IPV, you have to have some kind of flow to actually get it to the patient. So first thing we're gonna show you is how to do it through a nasal cannula. Here is our setup. You have your cannula. This is where your sample line is gonna go. This is a piece here where basically it's just gonna mix the gas so the sample line is accurate. And then our injector module is gonna go right here. You notice on the injector module there's a arrow. That's the direction you want it to be pointing. So right here. That goes there like so. And then here. This will be to your cannula, whatever liter flow you have it at. And then the last but not least is your sample line. So this is our sample line here. This is what's gonna give us all of our numbers. And it's going to connect right here. So, now you're ready, put this on the patient, start your flow at the wall, dial in whatever parts per million you want. That's your nasal cannula. Minimum flow you want to use on nasal cannula for nitric is two liters a minute. For those of you who work in the cath lab, sometimes they'll do nitric challenges on patients for a short amount of time, 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, for those situations, you can use the blender system to do that by just connecting your nasal cannula or mask here, turning your flow to whatever you, you would like, and then set your parts per million wherever the doctor wants that, and then they'll do the testing from there. Okay, next up, high flow nasal cannula, and we have a couple of different cannula systems that we're going to show you how to set it up. The first thing you want to do is your injector, okay? You're going to need these two pieces for this, 15 and a 22. 15 will go there, 22 will go there, and you remember the arrow that way. Always on the dry side of the, of the uh, column. No matter what modality we're using, it's always on the dry side. If water gets in here, we're in big trouble, so that's always on the dry side take this piece up here and here remember our arrow is pointing that way and then as far as the sample line if you have your regular comfort flow nasal cannula this is the piece that you'll use like so that will go here the cannula will fit in the end of this and then your sample line goes right here. Now for this particular setup, you don't need the big large bore tubing in between here because you've already got it all right there. So it's all mixing really well here, so you're gonna get a good sample for the patient. Next up is our RAM cannula, which we will use a lot in PICU. Uh, you have your sample adapter, 15, and your cannula goes right there very simple setup and then your sample line in the same place ram cannula last but not least one more the adult high flow system connection all you need is your 
sample adapter. It fits right on there perfectly, very easy. There are times when we have patients who are on inhaled nitric oxide that also need airway clearance, particularly in PICU, this happens. Now, there is a way to do that. It's a little bit different than what we just showed you um, with the high flow cannula setup, but it is doable. We need different pieces. The main piece that we need is a different head here. That will go on the end of your IPV, like so. Got to really get it on there. And these two pieces connect here. One is going to be for your sample line. One is going to be actually where the nitric is going to go in. And the way we're going to deliver it is not with the injector. We're going to deliver it with the blender. So we have our O2 tubing connected to our blender here. It will go. Doesn't really matter which one you're selecting because they're right next to each other. So, and then your sample line is going to attach to the other one. Like so, that to the patient. If you're doing it with the nasal cannula, it'll go right there, like so. ET tube, whatever your, your patient's on. The way you utilize the blender. So you're going to go ahead and use two to four liters per minute here. If you do more than that, you're going to add extra flow to whatever device you're using. You don't really want to do that. Two to four liters here. And then you're basically just going to use this. And it's usually going to be a lot higher than 20. Say you want 20 parts per million, you're going to have to dial this up until it says 20 parts per million here. And it's usually going to be anywhere from 40 to 60 on your, on your blender. It just depends. Um, and then go ahead and go ahead and do your treatment just as normal. And it's as simple as that. And for you NICU transport RTs, when you are out there and you're going to use the Bronchotron with INO, this is the exact setup you will use. What you will have is your Phasotron for your, from the Bronchotron in place of our IPV here. Exact same head, and it's going to be set up to your blender on your INO in the exact same way. Nitric oxide through bubble CPAP. We do this frequently in NICU, sometimes in PICU. And when I show you this setup, this will be with the neon tubing, will be the exact same setup as you would do on a neo ventilator with neo tubing. Same parts, same connections, it's all the same. So we'll show you through the bubble CPAP first. You need these pieces. This is the very important one that sometimes gets missed. If you don't have that, nothing will work. This goes there. This piece goes there, like so. And then the very important thing, inspiratory side. So your sample line has always got to be on the inspiratory side of any ventilator circuit. If it's on the expiratory side, you're not going to get any flow going through there that's going to tell you when anything's happening. So if you set up your, your nitric, you're not getting any readout, even though everything's on and functioning, make sure it's on the inspiratory side. It could be on the expiratory side. Very simple. This will go here. This will go here. Your sample line will go here. For the bubble CPAP with nitric oxide, you have your injector with your arrow pointing down again, just as before. We're going to go on the dry side of the column. You get your 15 and your 22. That will go there, and that will go there. Nitric oxide through a ventilator. All right, here we are. Um, here we have a servo U. Uh, the, the setup is exactly the same for the servo I. There's no difference at all. Uh, we, we're going to do pediatric tubing first. 
these are the two pieces that you'll need. This will go here, like so. And then inspiratory side. Get on there. And then your sample line here. Where does the injector go on the ventilator? Same as the other ones. Dry side of the column, your 22 and your 15, right there. Remember the arrow pointing down. Now for your adult ventilator tubing, your injector is in the exact same place as before. You have your tubing here, the parts you need 22, your sample line adapter, and then just a piece of corrugated tubing. Very simple. Inspiratory side comes off. Your piece goes on there. And the inspiratory line here. And then your sample line in its favorite spot there. That's your adult setup. Okay, nitric oxide through our VDR circuit. Here we have it. We have our injector. It's got to be on this side with the yellow tubing because we want the injector to go through the tube on the inspiratory side that's here. So it must be right here. Same thing, arrow pointing down, dry side, just as before. As far as the sampling, make sure that your red monitoring line is here, not here. You're going to take that little piece off. We need our trusty little extra adapter piece with your sample line, and that goes right there. Now, when you're using the VDR with the INO because of the system and the way that the flow is going to kind of come in through here, Sometimes on your actual machine, you're going to set it at 20. It might not read 20. You might have to set it a little bit higher, maybe 28, something like that, to get it to, to read 20. But just be aware that you might have to kind of go up a little bit on what you're actually setting it to get it to read 20 with this setup. Nitric oxide through the jet ventilator. It is one of our most complicated setups. It has to be done while this is in standby and not on the patient because you got to do stuff with the circuit. The pieces that you need are here. You got your 15, your little adapters here. This is a, a one-way filter so that water doesn't get back into this, and I'll show you where that goes. And then your sample line, which is actually going to go up towards your patient box near the patient uh, Y. Okay. I and O through the jet. It's arts and crafts time. You have to have your scissors. So first thing we do, we take this, we want to put in our little filter. So this is going to prevent water from going back into the sample line or the injector. The injector is going to end up right here. So we're going to put that in first. Cut that there. Here, like so. See there's a red arrow pointing that way. That's the direction we want it. Next is our injector. That is going to go right here. We got an extra piece of tubing. I'm going to grab here. So you have your injector here. Go in that direction. This is going to go there. That end to your gas outlet. other end here. The reason for this extra piece of tubing is sometimes when we cut this tube it's just too short to actually have all this extra width with the injector. So that that is your injector piece for the jet.
Last but not least, the sample line. Your trusty scissors are necessary again. We're going to cut this tubing that's going to the patient here. And then your sample piece looks like that. It's going to go here. And then here. Sample line attaches like so. There you have it. So that's the nitric setup for the jet ventilator. Easy, right? What if you have to manually ventilate your patient while they're on INO? We can do that. You take your bag, which when the patient is on nitric oxide, the AMBU bag is going to be connected here instead of to the wall so that if an emergency happens, you have to bag the patient, you can actually give them nitric oxide. So this is where it's going to be located. Your tubing here. You set your parts of Merlion wherever you want it to be, whatever you're on. And then your flow is going to be dependent on whatever size patient you have. So an adult patient's going to be 12 to 15 liters per minute. And then you disconnect and bag away. They're going to get 100% FiO2 or as close to it as you can get with whatever parts per million you have set here through the bag. Some extra information about things on this machine. Um, it's going to do its own calibration every 12 hours unless you've changed the dose. It'll do a little bit more frequently. When that happens, the screen won't go blank, but all the numbers will kind of disappear and it'll make a beep noise. If that happens, don't worry, the patient is still getting nitric. It's just going through its low calibration. If you're having to change to another tank, this one's going, getting close to being empty, you want to switch to the other one. Basically, you just set up the other side the same way with your other regulator. There's two of them. Connect it here, just as the other one is. Turn your tank on and it should switch right over when you turn the other one off. If you notice that your machine has a tag on it that says it needs to be high cald and it's functioning properly on the patient, you don't have to change it out. Just wait until it's discontinued, then make sure that they know that it needs its high calibration. It doesn't have to be changed out if it's functioning properly. Some quick troubleshooting advice here. Sometimes what can happen is this sample line can get too much residue in it. Um, when that occurs, this piece here will just basically go yellow and you'll get an alarm. Um, usually it's because too much moisture is coming back in here. Either you've got an aerosol going through there or Flolan is running. Um, just be aware if you're doing any kind of continuous nebulization of anything, you might have to change this out frequently. Um, to do that, you just get a new one and put it back on. If that doesn't solve the problem, there is a filter in the back here that you can also change. And those can all be done with the nitric running. The injector is still functioning. It's still going to the patient. It's just your sample that's off. Um, you can do all those things with it still running. So just be aware of that. And then the other thing that's really important, which is why we put this injector on the dry side. If there's any moisture that gets in this, it's gonna affect everything and you could get an alarm where your injector just fails. So one thing that's really uh, important when you have a patient on nitric, just make sure you have another injector somewhere nearby in case that happens and then make sure that this stays dry. There you have it, nitric oxide through every modality possible. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact a member of the pulmonary leadership team and they'll help you out right away. Thanks.